Okay, we're starting from the Gemara on Dafko Gimel Amit Beis. We're holding about 15 lines from the bottom, where it says at the beginning of the line, Amr Rabbi Yehuda, Matzin Hashem Katan, Mishem Gadol. Today we're going to be learning a lot about the Aleph Beis. It's a famous, famous Gemara here in Shabbos about the Aleph Beis. So it said in the Mishnah that if he intended to write Shmuel or Shimon, and he ended up writing Shem, Shin Mem, so then it's, he's Chayi for that. Frek the Gemara, Mi Dami. How could you compare the letter mem that you write in the word shimin or the letter mem that you write in the word or shimshin or the letter mem that you write in shame? Um, the sh- uh, the sh- uh, mem, the shame, the mem in the, in the word shame, sasum. It's a shlos mem, right? It's, it's closed from all sides. Mem the shimin, pasuach. The mem of the word shimin is the mem of a middle of a word and that mem is, is open. That's not the same mem bechlal. So if you just wrote shin mem, from the word Shimon, so you don't really have a word because it, it, it has to be with a yeah, means- ending mem, shlos mem. And says the Gemara, Rav Chiste, so Rav Chiste says, Zoy say meres, from here I see, sosum va'osay pasuach, in a place where it was supposed to be at the end of the word and it's supposed to be a shlos mem, and you ended up writing the open mem, kosher. It's going to be kosher. If you wrote it that way in the Sefer Torah, it's kosher. So over here as well, he has shin mem, even though it's the open mem, nevertheless, it's going to be a, 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 considered a full word because it's kosher to be written that way. So the Gemara brings a b'raise that seems to be saying, not so. Correct, the Gemara, Meisve, we learned in a b'raise as follows. Chsav Tom says in the Torah regarding tefillin, Zuzah, <laughs> that you should write, write it. So what do we learn out from Chsav Tom? Siva Tamo. When you write the letters of the Sefer Torah, it has to be Tamo, it has to be whole. Whole letters. And what does that mean? Shole yichtoiv, alfin, einin. Don't write, don't exchange an aleph for an ayin. Einin, alfin, don't exchange an ayin for an aleph. As Rashi says, because they sound similar when you pronounce them, so therefore you could exchange them. Beis and chofin, when you write the letters beis and chof, be careful that a beis should not be a chof or a chof should not be a beis because there's a very small difference in the way you write them. Gamin, tzadin, which is a gimel and a tzadik, tzadin, tzadin, gamin, also in their shape, they're similar. Dalsin, reishin, reishin, dalsin, the, the reishin, the dalar are very similar in their shape. Heyin, chesin, chesin, heyin, also very similar. Vavin, yudin, yudin, vavin, just a, it's a drop longer, the vav. Zainin, nunin, nunin, zainin, so Rashi says we're talking about the, the long nun, not the nun in the middle of the word, so the, it's the same shape as the zain, it just has to go a little bit further down. Tesin, peifin, peifin, tesin, the tesin, the pei are also similar. Kfufin, pshutin, then the Braise says those letters that are supposed to be bended in, right, which is usually in the middle of the word, like a nun in the middle of the word, it bends in, or the nun at the end of the word, and it has to be a long nun, don't exchange those two nuns, and pshutin, kfufin, don't exchange them. Um, mimin, uh, sorry, me- memin, samchen, samchen, memin, don't exchange the mem and the samach. We're talking about the end, the, the shlos mem and the shlos samach. They're very similar. Just one is square shaped and one is rounded out. Stumen, psuchen, and this is what's relevant for what we were speaking about. The letters that are supposed to be closed, don't be, it shouldn't be open. Psuchen, stumen, if they're open, they shouldn't be closed. And then also, parsha psucha, leyasena stuma. So when you have a break in the tater, there are two ways you could have a break. You could have a break, that it's a break all the way till the end of the line. And the next parsha begins at the next line. Or you have a break where there's a break of a certain space of, I think, four letters. I don't remember now how many. And then it starts again on the same line. Right, so you shouldn't exchange the two ways that you separate between one parsha and another. Parsha psucha, loyasana stuma, stuma loyasana psucha. If it's supposed to be open, don't make it closed. If it's supposed to be closed, don't write it open. Kosva kshida, Ka- sorry again, kosva kishida. If you write the entire Torah like the, like the shape that the, that the shir of Az Yashir is written. The shir of Az Yashir is not written straight lines, as Rashi describes it. It's written the way you uh, pile bricks where you don't have one directly on top of the other, but it's staggered, exactly. So if you write the entire Torah that way, or you don't stagger the way the lines of the Shira are written, but you write the Shira like the rest of the Torah, directly one line on the other. You wrote the Torah not with black ink. He wants to give a special honor for Devish's name, so he writes Devish's name with gold. All of these sefer it's puzzle, and it can be put into the Gniza. It's Seamus. So you see here clearly that you can't exchange sosum for pasuach. <coughs> How we say before that the mem, the mem pasuach works for the sosum. Answers the Gemara, who da'amakihaitana. He follows the opinion of this Tana, the Tanya Rabbi Yudu Ben Beseda Oimeh, Rabbi Yudu Ben Beseda Darshan, the following drasha, where we learn out 
the uh, mitzvah of uh, the, the, the Shiva Samayim or the Nisach Hamayim to pour water on the Mizbeach and Sukkis, so he said the following Remes. Nemar, so you have the seven days of the Karbanas that are brought in Sukkis, and it always says Veniska. Besides three days, that it adds three letters, Mem Yud Mem. So Bishani, the second day of Sukkis, the title says Veniskei Hem. So it says an extra Mem at the end of the word. Bishishi, the sixth day, it says Unisachecha. Which is the extra yud. Bishvi on the seventh day it says kimishpatam. Uh, so it says an extra mem there in the parsha as well. So hare mem yud mem. So we have the word mem yud mem, which is mayim. It spells out the word mayim. Mikan remez on isach mayim and atayda. This is the source. This is a hint for the for the halacha lemaish misina of nisach mayim that you see here in the tayda. So what do you see from what Rabbi Yehuda ben Mesayr is remez? Umid the pasuach va'asay sasim kosher. So over here we're using the shlas mem, the mem of niskei hem, as an open mem. This is an espachta, or huh? this is the source. It's, this is not the source. It's a remez. But even though it's a remez, we are using the closed mem for a remez for the mem in the beginning of the word mayim as an open mem. So if I see that I can use the closed mem. Even for the open mem, that would be fine. Kosher, so that's okay. So apparently, holds if you write it that way, it's fine, and therefore you can use the niske hem, the mem there, as if it was an open mem, because if it would be written that way, it's kosher. So sasum nami, sasum va'asay pesuach. The same thing could also be said regarding a sasum that a closed mem that you made it pesuach. It was supposed to be a closed mem, and you wrote it pesuach. That it's kosher. It's also going to be kosher. So the kids, so you see over here that Rabbi Yehuda ben Meseira holds that you could exchange the open mem with the closed mem, like you see over here, Benegayat to Maim, and you could exchange it in either, either or. Either the, so the closed Matthews, for the open and the open for the closed. Huh? The gematrias are also the same in a lot of times you use interchangeably. The gematrias of the open and the closed. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the same thing. So the gemara mi dami. How could you compare the two? Pasu say sasum. If you have a letter that was supposed to be open, um, oh, regular mem, and you made it a shlos mem. So then, that makes sense that if you exchange it for that, that it should be okay. Why? Iluye kamay You're taking the letter the way it was supposed to be open. You're making it a shlos mem. It's it's a it's a, a great it's a higher level. A closed mem is on a higher level. Why is that? Domer av chista mem v'samach shabaluchais. The two letters of mem and samach and the luchais. Benes Hayoimdim. They were there in the Luchais where it was a miracle because the Luchais, the letters of the Luchais went through and through from one side to the other. So if you have the letters of the Mem and the Samach that go through and through, the center of the Mem has to be suspended in midair. So therefore the Mem and the Samach and the Luchais were with a Nes. So what do we see? That the Shlas Mem and the Shlas Samach, the end Mem and the end Samach were in the Luchais. So that's, yeah, at a higher level, they're in the Luchais. Ella, so there, we don't find that regarding the regular mem. We don't see the regular mem was in the luchais. Ella, sasum v'asai pasuach. But if you did the other way around, it was supposed to be sasum and you made it pasuach, gerui kamegarele. You're going down a level. You're taking that letter that it was in the luchais and you're writing it in a way that it was not in the luchais, so you're going down a level. So who says that would be good? Why are we going down a level? These four letters, Mem, Nun, Tzadik, Fei, Chof. Tzayfim Amru. These are letters that the Nevi'im taught us these letters. So we see that these are letters that were only brought about later, that the Nevi'im taught them. So they're on a lower level. So it makes sense to say that if you switch from the closed Mem to the open Mem, you're going down a level, it shouldn't be okay. Wait, 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 we'll see one second. So the Gemara says, V'tizbira. Is this the case? Is this, isn't this of How could you say the Nevi'im are the ones that taught us these letters? But Vahaksiv it says, Eila mitzvis. It says in the Tayra, these are the mitzvis. She'ena Navi Rashoy Lachadish Dover. A Navi is not allowed to innovate his own mitzvis. And the same thing applies also to the letters of the Yalavis that we have in the Tayra. A Navi can't just come and create his own letters and say, oh, these are the, these, this, is, this is how you write the Tayra. So, so how can we say that the Nevi'im are the ones that were Machadish these letters? Ella, so what do we have to say? Meheva havoi, the, the letters were there before. Made the lehavi yadin, but they did not know. Hai be'emtza teve, hai le'besayf teve. They didn't know the shlas mem or the open mem, which one belongs in the middle of the word and which one belongs at the end of the word. That's the detail that the Nevi'im taught us what belongs where. Ba'asut tzayfim takninu. And the Nevi'im came and they established what belongs in the middle of the word and what belongs at the end of the word. The Nevi'im, the Nevi'im, it, it says in the Gemara in, in um, in Megillah, after Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, they forgot these letters. 
We'll see in a moment. The Gemara is going to say that they really just forgot the letters. Huh? One second. Oh, so the, here, let's see the Gemara's maskana. Because the Gemara asks on this as well. Va'akati, still, to rely on the Nevi'im. That they are telling us what belongs in the middle and what belongs at the end. Ela meyato. This is also considered to be something that the Nevi'im are telling us that they're being mechadish. This belongs here, this belongs there. They're creating the shapes of the words according to their nevuah. It's something that they can't be mechadish. It has to be known from before. Ela, so therefore we have to say that what happened was shakchum. They forgot it. And as I said, the Gemara Megillah, after Moshe Rabbeinu passed away, because of the, the mourning and everything, they forgot these letters. Even though it's pretty difficult to understand how it's possible to forget these letters, but they forgot. They forgot. Okay, so this is a shy that the Mepharshim ask, how it's possible. They forgot the letters. And the Nevi'im at that time period, and the Gemara, I think if I remember correctly, the name that it says over there is Asnil ben Knaz. If I remember correctly the, the, the name, he's the one that came and he established again, he reminded the Eden of these letters. And therefore, these letters that we have, whether it's the Mem, the open Mem, whether the closed Mem, both of them are the same holy, they had them all from before. The only thing is that they forgot certain letters, the Mansapacha, these letters that they forgot, and they came and they reminded the Eden again with the Nevoah. Okay, so we go back. So what we said before, the Sassim and Pesuach, they could be interchanged according to Rabbi Yehuda ben Beseda. Gufe, now we go to talk about these letters. Amr Rav Chista said, Mem v'samach sheba is ben The Mem and the Samach and the Luchais were there, it was a miracle. Amr Rav Chista, so, so Rav Chista explains, why was it a Nes? Ksav sheba Luchais, what was engraved in the Luchais, Nikram mi Bafnim v'nikram mi Bachotz. It could be read from both sides. And it gives an example, Kagayin Nevuv. If you take the word Nevuv, which, which is a word that the Torah uses, V'negei Atar Luchais, Nevuv Luchais. So if you read it from one side, you'll read it Nevuv. And if you read it from the other side, it's going to be backwards, reverse, Bubam. You're going to read it from the Beis to the Nun. That's, how, that's the way, right? If you're reading from one side and then the same things from the other side, you read it backwards. Or Saru, the word Saru, if you read it from the other side, you're going to start with the Vav, it's going to be Varos. So that's the way the Luchas was written. It was engraved not just on the surface, but it was engraved through and through. So it comes out that the center of the Mem and the Sama have to be extended or suspended in mid-ear in order to be able to have the shape of the letter. It's interesting that the Teda brings, that the Gemara that is, brings these words, Nevuv. I mean, Nevuv, it says by the Luchas, but this word, Saru. Varos, why does the Dafka bring this? Taisa says over here, Teima. Why does it bring Dafka these uh, letters? Why doesn't it bring actual words? That were written in the Luchas. Okay. Amri le Rabban le Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Rabban and said to Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Asu dar de kia idn lebe medrasha. Children came now to the shul, va omru mili, and they said things that Philippi may be sure ben nun lo yitma kavasayu. That even in the times of Yeshua ben nun, things like this haven't been said. So Yeshua ben nun was, of course, after Meshur Abenu. So Yeshua ben nun was only. Pnei Levana, he, was, he wasn't as powerful as Moshe Rabbeinu himself. So he's saying, even in the times of Yeshua ben Nun, this wasn't said. Could be in the times of Moshe Rabbeinu, it was said. What's, what did they say? Aleph base. What is the Remez? So the Gemara now is going to go through the Remez of the actual names of every single one of the letters. Right? So it's not like Lahavdol in, in English where you have A, B, C, that the actual names of the letters have no meaning whatsoever. The names of these letters are also things in the Teireh and each name has a meaning. Aleph Beis means Aleph Bina, learn Taita. That's what Ashir says, learn Taita. Aleph to learn, and Bina means to understand, so learn Taita. Gimel Dalid, Gemayel Dalim, be generous to poor people. Men, uh, my, uh, my time, so now the mother says, what's the reason? Pshute kare de Gimel legabi Dalit. Why is the leg of the Gimel extended towards the Dalit? When you write it, the shape of the letter, it's extended towards the Dalit. This is the conduct of a person that's generous. He doesn't wait for the poor people to come to him, but he runs to find people to give them tzedakah. And why is the, the leg of the Dalit also extended? It's written a little bit in a slant. If you look in the Sefer Torah, you'll see the, 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 the leg of the Dalit is written, written in a slant towards the Gimel. The limtzile nafsha, you should you should open yourself up. The ani, the poor person, should open himself up to accept the mud that's stuck from the balabas. He shouldn't cause the, the rich man to have to be matriach himself too much, as Rashi says here. 
Why does the Dalet turn away from the Gimel? If he's generous and he wants to give him, so why is the Dalet not facing the Gimel? It should be even better. Answers the Gemara, the Litan Lebetzina. That is because the way to give Tzedakah is to give it quietly, discreetly, that it shouldn't, the Gimel, the, the poor person, the Dalet that is, shouldn't know who is, it is coming from. So that the Dalet should not be embarrassed from the Gimel. This Indian of Gimel Dalet is an Indian that the Rebbe brought in Sichas many, many times, Api Kabbalah. Basically, the Gimel and the Dalet represent Mashpia and Makabal, as you see over here. And in the, the Rebbe brings up Api Kabbalah. Gimel is, the, the number Gimel is three. Three represents Atzil, Esbri, Yitzira. And Dalet represents when you have a fourth Eilam, which is Asiya as well, when it comes down to the world of Asiya. There's many other Ramazan that with the number of Gimel and Dalet, the Rebbe explains in many places, the Rebbe connects it to the Gimel, Gimel Matzis and the Dalet Kaisis. Many, many places the Rebbe brings this in, you know, the Mashpi and the Makabal relationship that you see here in the Gemara. Weiter, Hey and Vav. What are they? What do these two letters represent? This is connected to the Abish's name. Rashi here brings what it says in the Gemara and Sukke. Aniva hu Aishia no. Hey and Vav is the Abish's name. Zayin Ches Tes Yud Chof Lamed. So it means as follows. Vima to Oisik Kain. If you do so, if you give tzedakah, if you do what the Abish wants, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Zana Ischa. So the Abish will feed you. That's the Zayin. Vechein Oischa. The Abish will show favor in you. And I'll do good to you. Test. I'll give you an inheritance. The Yud. The I'll tie a crown to your head. The Lamed is for Oilam Abba. Mem Sucha Mem Stuma, which this whole thing started with over here. The, the open Mem and the closed Mem is Maimer Pasuach and Maimer Sosim. There are things that are open that you have permission to learn and to darshan, as Rashi says. And then there are things that are concealed, which refers to Maisa Merkova. Or more in general, the Rebbe also quotes this many, many times, there's the revealed aspect of Teireh, the nigla of Teireh, and the secrets of Teireh, the chesidus, that's the Maimah Pesuach and Maimah Sosim. Then the Nun also has two shapes, the Nun Kfufa, the Nun in the middle of the word, which is bent, and the Nun Pshuta, the straight Nun that goes down the, down the line. There's a Nemon Kofuf, the person that's Nemon, he's, he's uh, dedicated to the Ebeshta and he's Kofuf, he's humble, he bends his head. Bends himself, and or Nemon Pashut. Then there's the Nemon Pashut where he stands up firm. So Rashi says, a person that's Kafuf in this world, if you bend yourself, if you're humble in this world, you'll be standing tall and, and, uh, and uh, firm. Lost Lovai. Samech Ayim, what does this mean? Smoich Anim. You should uh, support poor people. Lishnachrina, another Pshat for Samech Ayim is Simonin Asei Betaira. When you learn Taira, you should make Simonim to help you remember things of Taira that you learn. Like you have a lot of times in the Gemara, make Simonim in order to help you remember. So that's uh, good advice for learning. Uh, and then you'll acquire, you'll be able to remember what you learn. The pay, the pay that is, pay, you have pay kfufa. You also have a pay where the letter is bent when it's in the middle of the word. word. And the pay pshuta, the pay that um, goes straight down the line when it's at the end of the word. Pe pasuach, pe sosum. You have to have an open mouth sometimes, and sometimes you have to have a closed mouth. Rashi here quotes, huh? important thing. Got to know when to speak and when to keep uh, your mouth closed. Rashi here brings from the Gemara and Brachas that we learned that when you have a person in the community that's greater than you, that's teaching Teira, so then just listen. If you have something, if nobody else is teaching Teira, then you have to open your mouth and teach Teira. Tzadik, so there's, there's the Tzadik Kfufa. By the way, that's the, the right way to print it. The letter is Tzadi, really without the Kuf at the end. That's the, the right name for the letter. Tzadik Kfufa, there's the Tzadik in the middle of the word, which is um, uh, bent, and Tzadik Pshuta, the Tzadik that goes down the line. What does this refer to? Tzadik Kfufa, Kafuf. A tzaddik, which is humble and bend his head, and tzaddik poshet. And lo'asud lavoi, he will be firm and stand up tall, the tzaddik poshet. Frek the gemara, hainu nema kofuf nema poshet. The rem, as you're saying here regarding the tzaddik, is the same rem as you said regarding the nun. So we have that already. Answers the gemara, haisuf l'cha hakosuf kfifal kfifosai. The teire here is adding an additional level of humility. That the, the, you have one level of kofuf. It tells you again, a tzaddik has an even greater degree of this level of humility. One's a neman, one's a tzaddik. True, so that, that itself is probably part of the answer of the Gemara, that, that the tzaddik represents the additional level of uh, humility. From here we see that the teireh is given to a person that has a trembling head, he has a tremendous amount of humility. Kuf is Kaddish, Kuf refers to the Eivishter that's holy. The Reish is the opposite, Reish is a Rosha. 
So my time in Mahada Ape the Kuf Mireish. Why does the Kuf turn away from the Reish? Omar Kadish Baruchu, the Abishta says, Ainani Yochal is stakal berosha. I can't look at a Rosha. The Abishta does not want to look at a Rosha. My time in Mahadre Tage the Kuf Lagabi Reish. The Kuf has a uh, small little um, uh, kites on top of it, a little, little crown on top of it, and that the shape of that crown is tilted towards the Reish. Amr HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Ebesh says, Im boy, if the Rosh does tshuve, ani koishu le kesek ha-moisi. I will tie him the same crown like I have. Well, my time, I carry the kuf tluya. Why is the, the um, leg, the left leg of the kuf, hanging and it's not attached to the top part of the kuf? So because this is another remus for tshuve. The Ihad Bay, if the Rosh, the Reish, which is right there, wants to do tshuve, le'ayil, le'ayil. He can go in right over there at that gap that there is between the roof of the kuf and the left leg of the kuf. Why can't he just go, come down from the bottom? He can go around. The reish doesn't have to go directly in. Let him come down from the bottom. The bottom of the kuf is open. It's not like a schlossman which is closed from all, all sides. Let him come in from the bottom. So this point that we're saying here regarding the shape of the kuf, it supports what Rish Lakish said. Dom Rish Lakish, Ma'ad Echsev. What's the pshat on this that it says in the pasuk? Im leleitzim who yolitz. A person that's cynical, so so he he will be a cynic. Ula novim those that are humble yitn chayn. The Eibushter gives them grace. What does he? What do you learn from this pasuk? Balat balat tamei. A person that wants to be impure. The Eibushter allows him. The Eibushter op- opens the way for him. It doesn't say that Eibushter gives him the kayach for this. Right? It just says who yolitz. He, he will be able to be a let's. doesn't say the Ebesha gives it to him though. Bali a person that comes to be pure. So over here it's having the title of the word Yitain. Bali Toir, Messiah So then he gets an assistance. The Ebesha helps him to, to, uh, to do this. So therefore, when you get to the Kuf and the Reish, the Ebesha helps him and makes that extra opening for him right over there at the top that he should be able to go straight in. Okay? The sikha, what the Rebbe says, and that the, the Ha'ara and the Nasa sikha and Chelkit Gimel, the Rebbe says that you can read Habal Etair in two ways. In the way it's written in the Gemara, it's read Bali Toher, which means he wants to purify himself. But it could also be read Habal Etair Acherim. If you come to purify others, then the Ebesha gives you even a greater measure of, ex- of assistance. Weiter, Shin is Sheker. The Shin represents falsehood. Which is brought in the, the Basil Gani Maim. There's a big arichas about the Sheker of the Shin, the Gansa Maisa with the Kroshim, the Sheker. Okay. This is the source of the yeah, this is it. It's also in Zoyar Barichas, but in the Gemara it's here. And Tov, the letter Tov is Emes. It's part of the word Emes. It's the last letter of the word Emes. So therefore, Tov is Emes. Frek the Gemara, my time is Shekem, a carven mile. Why? In the letters, in the word Sheker, that is, Shin, Kuf, and Reish, the three letters that make up the word. There are three letters right near each other. And MS, Merach Kemile, and the word MS, the three letters are the furthest letters from each other. The olive is right at the beginning, the mem is right in the middle, and the top is right at the end. So the answer is Shikra, Shchiach, Sheker, something that's common, and Kushta, Loy Shchiach. And the uh, truth, honesty, is something that's not common. There's the other famous pshat that, that the Rebbe brings very often that it says in the Yerushalmi that Adarabe, the letters of Emes that are the beginning, middle, and the end, shows on the nature of truth. The nature of truth is something that penetrates through from the beginning, middle, to the end. So it shows also on a Maila. Well, my time, Shikra, Achad, Akar, Akoi. Why is the, all the, le- all the um, letters of the word Sheker, they are standing on one leg. The Sheker, the, 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 the shape of the Shin, comes to a point, the Kuf, is, has one, le- one leg to stand on because the, the kuf st- extends down and the reish also has only one leg to stand on. The ms mal bune. The way the letters of the word ms are, are, are shaped, it's like you have a brick which is, sh- which is positioned very, very firmly. So Aleph, Mem, and Sof have two legs to stand on very firmly. That's the Gemara because kush de koi, truth will stand, eventually the truth will come out, shikra loy koi. No, a falsehood does not last. Eventually it's exposed and eventually it falls away. Now the Gemara brings another Ramaz bin Igeya to the letters. And here there's the combination, different combinations of the letters. And it starts with a combination taking the first and the last of the letters. At-Bash, which is known as At-Bash. So the Gemara starts At-Bash, started the first and the last, the second and the second to last. What is the Ramaz in this? Oisi Tav. If you um, have, have the, the, um, treated me disgusting, saying that the Ebishter is speaking here, that if you treat the Ebishter this way, 
So um, I should desire you. The Ebesha says, if you treat me this way, I should desire you. What does bash mean? Beishin means, be loy choshak. If you don't desire me, shmi yochel olav, should my name uh, dwell upon you? Should be put upon you? Gimel reish. What's the remez here? Gufoy time. If you defile, if you impurify your body, arachim olav, I should have any mercy upon you. The dalet kuf, dal soisai noal. My doors you closed. You, you don't bring the Ebeshter in. Karn of loya Should I not cut off your horns, your, your strength? So at Kanda Gemara says, Midas Hashoim. Until here we're darshaning the combination of the first and last letter and so on, uh, the way it applies to the Shoim. The Gemara doesn't go on to darshan the rest of this, this whole thing for the Shoim. Avon Midas Tzadikim, then we could darshan, and here the Gemara is going to darshan the entire, all the letters for Tzadikim. At Bash, how do we dash in this? Imat Baish. The at means you. If you are um, Baish, if you're humble and if you're, you're shameful, so then Gardak. What does Gardak mean? Imat Oisekain, Goyer Bedaik. You can come and live in Bedaik in a place which is, uh, the Rashi here says, uh, mean, Bedaik means heavens. Rashi means Bedaik, it goes on Shemayim. You, you'll be able to live in Ganeid in a high place. Hey, tzaddik, and vav, and the fei. What's the combi- these combinations? Chatzitze. Have a benoch la'af. There'll be a separation between you and anger. That if you do what the Ebeshter wants, there'll be a separation between you and anger. Zayin, ayin, ches, samech, tes, nun. Ve'en atom is The zayin, ayin is the word mizdazeya. You will not tremble mina satan from the satan. The ches, samech, and the tes, and the nun. If you replace the ches and the samech with a hey and a sin, very similar pr- pronunciation, so then you get ha-satan. So you will not be afraid of the satan. Yam kol, the combination of these letters, Omar sar shal gehenim. The sar shal gehenim, which is the satan, says, Lefnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he says to the Ebeshter, Ribayni Shalei, the master of the universe. Layam kol, let, let everybody go into the, into the ocean. And what he's referring to is the ocean of gehenim. Everybody should, everybody has something that they're deserving to go into the ocean of gehenim, including the Eden as well. So the Ebeshter answers him, and here we're going to use another system of combining the letters. We're going to combine every seventh letter. The Aleph and the Ches, the te- and, the, and then the Samech is the seventh letter after the Ches. And the same thing with the Beis and the Tes and the Ayin, the Gimel, the Yud and the Fei, we're combining the seventh letter. So what's the Pshat in this Remez? And Yichos the Aleph Ches Samech refers to the fact that the Ebesha says, I, Aleph, I, will be Chos I have mercy on the Yidin, why is that? the beta means batu because they kicked, they, they rebelled the gif in gif. What's gif? Rashi says gif refers to Avedizara. Or actually, sorry, Neof. Neof in inappropriate relationships. So the Yidin that are Bayat and Neof, therefore I have Rahmanas on them. Then when you combine the seven letters, you have Dalit Chof. Tzadik, what does this mean? Dachim heim, the Eden are humble or the Eden are sincere. Kainim heim, the Eden are upright. Tzadikim heim, the Eden are tzadikim. So the Ebesh is being melamed tzchos on the Eden to the Yetzahara. Hey, lamed kuf, what does this um, represent? Eilach hachelik pehen, you have no portion in the Eden at all. Marzen, shin, sof, so marzen is again the, every, uh, every seventh letter. What is this? Omar Gehenim Lefanov. The Gehenim says to the Ebeshter, Rebbeinu Shalaylam, Master of the Universe, Mari Zanini Mizare Shalshes. I want to be fed from all of the children of Shes. What's the significance of this? So Rashi says, who are all the children of Shes? The Yidin and the Gaim, everybody, exactly. So what he's saying to the Ebeshter is, that Yidin and Gaim should fall into the Gehenim all together. So the Ebeshter answers him, no. Amalei, says the Ebeshter says to him, and here there's another system of combining the letters, and that is every 11th letter. You combine every 11th letter together. <laughs> Aleph and Lamed, Beis and Mem, Gimel and Nun, Dalet and Samach. And the Ebeshter is answering the Yitzhahara as follows. Where am I going to take the Eden? Legan Hados. I'm going to take them to Gan Eden, which is a Gan Hados of Myrtle, of, of, of Hadassim. And that's the uh, um, uh, Aleph Lamed, is Eilichem, Bom, uh, to Gan Hodos. Gan Das is Gan Hodos. Okay. Hey Ayin, again, the, we're combining now the 11th letter. Hey Ayin and the Vav and the Fei. Again, there's a conversation between the Gehenim and the Ebishter. Amre Gehenim Lufnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Rebbeinu Shaleilam Oyev Anoichi. So the Vav and the Fei saying to the Ebishter that I am, uh, or the Hey and the Ayin is saying, like Rashi here says, Hinini Of, I am uh, tired. Uh, the, the, the fei is part of that word of uh, uh, oyef as well, that I'm tired. 
So the Ebishta answers him, Zayin Tzadik Ches Kuf. What's the Ebishta's answer? Halalu Zarei Shal Yitzchak. These Yidin are the children of Yitzchak. Zarei, the Zayin of the Tzadik is Zarei Shal Yitzchak. The Tzadik Ches Kuf is Yitzchak. And therefore I will not grant the Yidin to you for Gehenna. And the last Remus over here of every 11th letter is Tes Reish Yud Shin Chof Tov. Tar, Tar means wait for me. Yashli Kitta is Kitta Shal Eved Gehenna. I have Groups and groups of Goyim for you, Shani Naisen Lucha, I will give to you to fall into Gehenim, but not the Eden. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm sure there's probably like whole, uh, whole These are all Alpi Kabbalah, you could imagine. Yes. If this is Alpi Nigla, Alpi Kabbalah, the, the, the depth of the significance of each one of the letters of the Alaves, if you just want, you can take out the Sefer Erechim. Where it has all the um, olive bays of Pikabal and Alp with the Rebbe's father from Lukuti Levi Yitzchak, and you can uh, have, a very, have a very good time. You can see, based on this Gemara, it's unbelievable. You can learn it for weeks and weeks, even now months and months, until Chafav. Zok the Mishnah. If you write two letters, which is the Malacha, and you write them both, Behelo Mecha. You say, Yechayev. You did the Malacha, and Behelo Mecha, Yechayev. Kosav Bidyoi, you wrote the letters with Dyoi, which is black ink, Bisam, which a Gemara will say is yellow ink, Bisikra, red ink, Bikumus, which is, Kumus is, we'll see in the Gemara what it is, okay. Um, uh, what do you have over there? Ah, can you? Copper, sulfide. Okay, copper, Kankantum, a sulfite, I think. Or Bechol, Dova, Shuhuraishim, or anything that makes a mark. Ah? Gum. gum, okay, gum and, and sulfur. Bechol, Dova, Shuhuraishim, anything that makes a mark. So, Yechayev. Another case, you're writing on two sides of a wall, but they come together in a corner, as Rashi says, and therefore they can be read together. You're writing in two parts of a tablet, but you can read them together. You read them together. So in all these cases, you're you write on your, on your skin. If you scratch letters into your skin, Rabbi Eliezer mechayev chatas. For that, Rabbi Eliezer says, yechayev chatas. Chachamim paitrin. Chachamim say, scratching letters into your skin, you potter for that. The Gemara will explain. Kosav b'mashkin, you write letters with juice. B'meipeiris. So I said, ah, mashkin, as she says, is let's say strawberry juice or other kinds of meipeiris. And then you have fruit juice. Ba'avak drochim, you use sand on the ways to form shape letters. Ba'avak asayfrim, there is a certain avak that's left over from the leftovers in the uh, inkwell of a, of a uh, scribe. Or b'chol dove she'enim eskayim, or you write with anything that will not last potter. Has to be, we just already learned in the previous Mishnah that a malach is only if it's a dover amaskayim. La'acha yada, if you write it in a backwards way with the back of your hand, not in the regular way of writing, but ragla, you write with your foot, bepiv with your mouth, bimarpeka with your elbow, or kosov ois achas, samoch liksav, you write only one letter, near, even if it's near another letter that's already written, so now you have two letters together, or you write ksav agav iksav, it's already written, but you just write on top of something that's already written before. Neskav and lichtiv ches. You wanted to write a ches, or kosav be zainin. Instead, you wrote two zainin, right? That's the way you write it in the Sefer Teireh. You write two zainin, then you make a, a, a roof to combine them together. Actually, our minig, the minig of the Arizal is, it's a zainin and a vav. So instead of writing the ches, you wrote two zainin. Achas ba'oretz va'achas ba'kaira. You wrote one letter on the ground and one letter at the, on, the, on the roof. In the house, that is, the roof of the house and the floor of the house. Kosovo base Kaisli Abais, you wrote on two walls of the house, or Ashne Dafe Pinkis, or on two ta- different tablets on two different sides of a document. But the Einegim Zemze, they cannot be read one with another. You're going to have to cut out one part of the document to bring it together, or you're going to have to cut off the piece of the floor to be able to bring it together to the roof to read it together. So then, Potter. Then you'll be Potter. Kosov Ais Achas Natrikin, if you write one letter and you write it as a, an abbreviation, right? You put an apostrophe on the top and you have an abbreviation. Rabbi Shur Ben Mesayda Mechaev, Rabbi Shur Ben Mesayda says, even though you don't have the other physical letter, but the first letter is giving you the abbreviation of the next letter, you chayev for that. And Chachamim Paitrim, Chachamim say, you only chayev if you actually wrote two letters. Okay, first the Gemara will identify the various colors of ink that it mentioned in the Mishnah. Diyoy is the yuta, which is black ink. Sam is sama, which is some kind of a poison which creates a, a yellow ink. Sama is sikra, which is a, a, a red pigment. And Omer Abba Barachon is sikrase. Ah, I, I read it wrong. Again, let's start again. Sikra. What is sikra? Omer Abba Barachon is sikrase. It's the red ink. Shema, that's its name, right. Kumos is kuma, which is gum. 
This is the, the uh, black that's used for shoes. Okay, basically shoe polish. Anything that makes a mark. What is this coming to add? If we said already all the colors, what else is there? If you write with dirty rainwater, or the aftza, or you write it with aftza, which is galna juice, it's also kosher. So it's also going to be kosher if you write a sefer tayde with that, or you write the zuzis with that. So therefore, you chay for this. Tani it up here, kosvei. Why can't you say that it's coming to not the when you scratch onto something? Scratching it says befedish in the mission, you know. Uh, does it say over here? It says um, scratching that we had before. Okay, could, could be. So after gemara vayta kosvei be'aver. If you write, write with lead, be'shochir with uh, charcoal or be'shichir. Shichar again, I think, is the um, is the uh, shoe, shoe polish. Am I right? Oh, is it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Then kosher, also kosher. Okay. So these are all the various different colors that you can be writing with, different uh, substances that you can be writing with, and all of, and all of them yichayev. Hamesarat al If you are uh, scratching it into your skin, tan. So we had the machlokes in the Mishnah. Rabbi Yezer and the Chachamim whether yichayev or not. So tan. You learned in the Brayso. Rabbi Rabbi Yezer the Chachamim. Rabbi Yezer said to the Chachamim as follows. Vahaloi brought them an incident where you see that writing on your skin is something that's significant because Vahaloi Ben Satada, this individual of Ben Satada, his name was Ben Satada, Hoitzi Kishofim, he brought out the Kishof Mimitzrayim from Mitzrayim. So, how did he bring out the different writings of Kishof from Mitzrayim? He couldn't write it down on a piece of paper and bring it out because they would have ca- caught him and they wouldn't let him take it out. So, how did he bring it out? Besrite Sha'al Besarek. He, he scratched it into the skin of his body. Tattooed, yeah. uh, tattooed it, or even without tattoo, he just he scratched it into the skin of his body, and like that, he brought the information out. So you see that this is a significant way of writing things. Amrulai, the Chacham responded to him, no, shaita haya. That is a person that did something with a shaita. Ve'em mevin raim in a shaitan. You can't bring a rai that this is a normal way of writing from something that a shaita does. So therefore, Chacham said this is not a normal way of writing, you're not chai for this. So it's an important thing to remember. You don't bring a rai from shaitan. So you write one letter near another letter that's already written there. Mantana Omar Rav Omar Rav or Rav Bar Rav Huna the Loik Rav Liazer. This is not like Rav Liazer's opinion. The Rav Liazer because if we're going according to Rav Liazer, what does Rav Liazer hold? He says we see this later. Mitzvah Shem Hammer Achas Al Ach Al Haorik Chayiv. If what, what's that word again? I've done. Ha-Omar, ha- sorry, again. <laughs> Ha-Omar, Rabbi Yezah said, Achas ala'orik chayiv. Even though the minimum amount for weaving is two threads, but if you already have one thread and you added a second thread, you would be chayiv. The next case in the Mishnah was Ksav al Gabi Ksav. It's already, the, the letters are already written. You write on top of them to, to emphasize it and to make it darker. You write a second time, you, so you chayiv for that as well. So actually, sorry, what did it say in the Mishnah? If you write Ksav al Gabi Ksav, so then you potter. Okay. So man tana om Rav Chista. Rav Chista says the loike Rav Yude. It's not following Rav Yude's opinion. The Tanya we learned in Abraisa. Rav Yude says harei shahoy etzarech lichta v'sashem. If a person has to write the name of the Eibushter when you're writing a sefer Torah, v'niskaven lichta v'yehuda. Instead of having the kavana to write the name, your kavana was to write the word Yehuda, the name Yehuda. You made a mistake and you had that kavana. But what actually happened? You did it right. Vita, you made a mistake. V'loy hitul boy dalid. And you didn't put that Dalit that you intended to put there of the name Yehuda. Okay, so you basically wrote a name of the Abish there without having Kavana to write the Abish's name. When you write the Abish's name in the Sefer Torah, you have to have Kavana to write the Abish's name. And he did not have that Kavana. So what do you do? Mavid all of Kulmus, Umekatshe. Just put, write over it a second time and, and have the Kavana for the Abish's name and you will sanctify the Abish's name. That's Rabbi Yudah's opinion. Chachamim say, "Ein Hashem and Amufcher." The shame is not proper, and it doesn't only mean that it's not Min Amufcher, but it means that it's possible. You can't use it. So, what do you see over here? Rabbi Yehuda holds when you write over a second time, it's kosher, it's good. So that's not like what it said in our Mishnah. When you write a second time, it's it's you'd be potter. It's worthless. You'd be potter. Tana we learned in Abraise Kosav Ois Achas. You wrote one letter of Shlima. And the Shlim the Sefer. You finished an entire Sefer. So you had an entire Sefer written and it was missing the last letter. And you wrote that last letter 
And that completed the whole Sefer. Let's say a Sefer of Nachrash, he says. Or Orak Chut Echad, you only wove one thread. That was the last thread that was needed to complete the garment. Chayev. Even though it's only one, but because you completed the whole thing, you'd be Chayev for that. Not sure if you're Chayev for the Melacha of Eirig or Kaisev, or you're Chayev for Makkeb or Patish. Maybe, for, for you, maybe you are Chayev for Kaisev or Eirig. Okay. Man Tanem, who's the Tan of this Braisa? Omar Rav Barav Honor Rabbi Yezehi. This is Rabbi Yezeh. The Omar, Rabbi Yezeh says, that if you add one thread to what's already woven, you'd be chayev for that. So over here as well, it says you add one and you chayev. Ravashi Yomar, Ravashi says, no, I'll fill the time with Rabbanan. Even according to the Rabbanan, in this case, you'd be chayev because lahash shani. When you wrote that one, you completed the whole sefer or you completed the whole garment. You write one letter in the city of Tveriyeh, and then on Shabbos you walk to the, on another place, they're close to each other, you walk to Tzipoyri, and you write over there. Chayev, you would be Chayev, even though they're not together, they're very far from each other. Ksivihi, you wrote two letters. El Kreva, they're not near each other, you just, you have to, you can bring them together, but you're Chayev, even though they're not together. Frek the Gemara, but Vahatnan, we learned in the Mishnah, Kosa Vashnei, Kosli Abayis, you wrote on two parts of a wall, Vashnei Dafi Pinkus, on two parts of a, uh, of a Pinkus, of a tablet, the Ein Negin Zemzeh, you can't read them one with another Potter, you'd be Potter. So how do we say over here that if it's two different cities, you'd be Chayev? Answers the Gemara, Hosa Mechosa Maise, the Kreve. Over there, in order for you to bring together the two parts of the letters the, from the two different tablets, you're going to have to cut out some of the tablet and then you can bring them together. Or if it's on a roof and on the floor or two different walls, you're going to have to cut it out and bring it together. Over here, there's no action that has to be done. You don't have to cut anything out. You just, you, you, all you have to do is, you have these two letters, you bring them together without cutting anything out. You just have to bring them together. They're both written, let's say, on the edge of a paper. You bring them together without cutting anything out. You can read them together. So if you don't have to cut anything out, and you just have to bring them closer, then you'd be chayiv, even if when you wrote it, they were not together. That's what he meant to say. Okay, stop over there.